is the fourth video of the thoric series. In this video, I will be talking about the superior mediastinum and posterior mediastinum. The mediastinum is the middle septum, which is the middle area of the thoracic cavity between the right and left pleural cavities. Superior mediastinum extend to the thoracic inlet. The lower boundary is sternal angle. If we draw a plane from sternal angle all the way to T4, T5, that is the area of the superior mediastinum. Inferior mediastinum extends from a sternal angle all the way to the diaphragm. This can be divided again into the three parts, anterior, a middle, and a posterior. Anterior extends on the posterior aspect of the body of the sternum to the fibrous pericardium. The middle mediastinum is within the fibrous pericardium and the posterior mediastinum extends from the posterior part of the fibrous pericardium to the vertebral column from T5 to T12. Let me demonstrate the structures of the superior mediastinum, superior end of thoracic cavity, diaphragm, middle mediastinum and we are looking at the structures of the superior mediastinum. Manubrium has taken out. The first plane is the venous plane and in the venous plane we see the left brachiocephalic vein crossing over the right side and meeting with the right brachiocephalic vein forming the superior vena cava. Superior vena cava is traveling down to open into the right atrium. The second plane in the superior mediastinum is the arterial plane. This is the arch of aorta. Ascending aorta will become arch at the sternal angle and at the same point the arch will become the thoracic aorta. There are three branches given by the arch. The first branch is brachiocephalic artery. Brachiocephalic artery is going to divide into right subclavian and right common carotid artery. The second branch is the left common carotid artery. The third branch is left subclavian artery. On the third plane is the visceral plane and we are seeing a glimpse of the trachea between the brachiocephalic artery and the left common carotid artery. The trachea is going to divide into the main bronchi at the sternal level Posterior to the trachea is lying the esophagus. So nerves of the superior mediastinum, there are two major nerves, the vagus and the phrenic. This is the left vagus nerve. It crosses the arch and the first branch is given around the ligamentum arteriosum. This is the area which I am pointing and this is the branch will go around the arch and go back to supply the larynx. It passes in the groove between the trachea and the esophagus. So this is your left recurrent laryngeal nerve. On this right view of the sagittal prosection of the thorax, let me demonstrate some of the structures of superior mediastinum. Starting with the superficial plane which is the venous plane, I'm pointing to the right brachiocephalic vein joining with the left on the other side, superior vena cava. 
draining into the right atrium. This vein is a zygous vein. It's arching over the root of the lung to join the superior vena cava. Posterior to the venous plane is the arterial plane. We can have a glimpse of the precocephalic coming from the arch. Deeper to the arterial plane is the visceral plane and that contains the trachea and the esophagus. The trachea is going to divide into the right primary bronchus and left we cannot see at this point. This is the esophagus on the posterior aspect and the group between the trachea and the esophagus, this is the area where the recurrent laryngeal nerve is going to ascend up towards the larynx. This area is the root of the lung, right primary bronchus, two pulmonary vein and the pulmonary artery. The nerves in this area, the first nerve here we see anterior to the root of the lung is the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve comes from the C3, C4, C5 spinal level. Though it is a somatic nerve, but it acts like an autonomic nerve. That means there is no voluntary control of the diaphragm. It supplies the diaphragm and it has the sensory fibers which also will supply the fibrous pericardium and the mediastinal part of the parietal pleura. On the posterior aspect, we are looking at the right vagus nerve. Right vagus goes posterior to the root of the lung where it is going to divide into small little plexus and form a plexus around the esophagus which is called as esophageal plexus and these plexus unite to form the posterior vagal trunk. Vagus nerve is a tenth cranial nerve and it carries parasympathetic fibers for the viscera in the thoracic region and the viscera in the abdominal region. So on this prosection, anterior, posterior, superior, inferior, we are going to see the contents of the posterior mediastinum. My probe demarcates the superior boundary of the posterior mediastinum. Inferior boundary is the diaphragm, which is this muscle I am holding by my probe. The area I am pointing is the thoracic aorta and some of the branches of thoracic aorta in the posterior mediastinum are the bronchial artery which we cannot see, esophageal artery that is another we cannot see but the arteries which we can see are the posterior intercostal arteries and these arteries are going to cross the, the body of the thoracic vertebrae to reach into the intercostal spaces. So this is, I'm pointing to the posterior intercostal arteries. The structure I'm pointing, this is the zygous vein. The zygous vein drains the posterior abdominal wall and posterior thoracic wall. A zygous means unpaired, so it stays on the right hand side the left side is drained by the hemiazygous veins. 
it drains the posterior intercostal veins I'm pointing to the posterior intercostal veins it ascends up on the right side arches over the root of the lung and it drains the contents in the superior vena cava so this is the arch of a zygous the zygous vein and draining the posterior intercostal veins the structure I'm pointing is sympathetic chain sympathetic chain runs from the cervical region all the way to tip of coccyx so there is a right chain and there is a left chain on the left side at every thoracic level it has got a ganglia the structure I am holding is the greater splanchnic nerve splanchnic nerves are autonomic nerves they carry either sympathetic or parasympathetic fibers to a viscera splanchnic means hollow organ greatest splanchnic nerve is formed by the contribution from the sympathetic fibers which are running in the chain it's derived from the T5, T6, T7, T8 and T9 lesser splanchnic nerve is formed by the contribution from T10 and T11 and the least which we cannot see is formed by the contribution from the T12 on this right side of the sagittal section I'm going to demonstrate the course of the thoracic duct superior inferior diaphragm posterior anterior chest wall root of the lung this is the right phrenic nerve posterior mediastinum we are looking at the esophagus coursing towards the diaphragm on the side here I'm holding the thoracic duct thoracic duct is formed in the abdomen in, and it ascends up after piercing the diaphragm on the right side of the esophagus crosses the chest wall around T4, T5 and it drains the content at the junction of the left internal jugular with the left subclavian vein. So this is the left view of the sagittal prosection, superior, inferior, the diaphragm, anterior chest wall, posterior chest wall some of the structure of superior mediastinum left phrenic nerve lying anterior to the root of lung left vagus crossing the arch of aorta giving the left recurrent laryngeal branch and the nerve going to form the anterior vagal trunk I'm pointing to the arch of aorta and the descending aorta that will leave the thoracic cavity at T12 level passing through the diaphragm. On the posterior aspect of the heart, this muscular tube is esophagus. Over the esophagus, these network of nerves are the esophageal plexus formed by the right and the left vagus nerve the left vagus nerve will form the anterior vagal trunk and I'm pointing to the anterior vagal trunk this is where it will exit the thoracic cavity from the same opening where the esophagus enters the abdomen at T10 level these are the posterior intercostal branches 
on the left hand side given by the descending thoracic aorta. This structure which I am pointing is the sympathetic chain. On the left hand side the greater splanchnic nerve. This is lesser splanchnic nerve and least we cannot see in this prosection. Trouble the water, wait in the water. 